Um, the future is all about sustainability and automation as more companies aim to reduce their carbon footprint. Let's talk about input settings and system configuration. This is a big one for in the, for in the installer world. These are all just settings to, to optimize your, your return on investment at the end of the day. Um, if you have excess battery and you do not just want to use it to reduce your own cost, you can also export that into the grid, get a higher rebate. The, we have set points for your generator's minimum power that it needs to, to maintain. We are very much focused around demand charge at the moment. That I think it's a bit of a surprise cost that's, that's hit a lot of the, of the guys lately. Um, we apply some AI to, to your data. We monitor historical data. We do forecasts for, for the next few days. The most important things to, to know before you install any solar system like this, whether it's our EMS or not, is your usage patterns, your peak times, when is when do you need the most power? Energy trackers position quite strongly to support the shift in uh, smart data-driven energy management solutions. Hello everybody. Um, I'm Lucas from Harold's Group. I'm the technical manager here at Harold's. Very excited today to talk to Rehart from Energy Track. It's a very exciting product that we are partnering with uh, with Energy Track and Rehart and his team. And we will go over some of the features and the outlines and whatever this product is about. So, uh, without further ado, Rehart, welcome here at, at Harold's in Bloemfontein. How are you doing? Thanks, Lucas. I'm good. Thanks, new. Very good. Very good. Good. So. Richard, we're all very excited about your product and the new the features that you've added to it over time. Let's start with what is Energy Track? What does it do? You know, give us a little bit of background on it. So Energy Track is primarily an energy management system. Um, it's a comprehensive solution for monitoring and controlling energy systems specifically designed for the commercial and industrial sectors. Uh, what makes us unique is our flexibility of configurability. Um, we offer tailored control over power usage, PV generation, battery management, uh, grid interactions, load management, and we allow the users to optimize energy flow across various scenarios, reducing energy costs and enabling best practices. Who, um, who, who's your, your target market? Who would benefit most from, from your solution? So Energy Track is ideal for um, businesses in the commercial and industrial space, um, even up to municipality sizes and organizations with complex, complex energy needs. Okay. Um, the key benefits, let's quickly talk about that, of, of the system. What, what, what can users expect that uh, the solution brings to the table for them? So users can get precise control over, um, over the energy distribution, leading to optimized usage and reduced energy bills. Um, our system smart modes and battery management help reduce reliance on grid power during peak hours, cut down demand charges, um, and enable energy trading as well, which collectively boosts efficiency and provides sustainable cost savings. Okay. Um, I guess we'll, we'll, as we go through some of the detailed specifics of it, we'll, we'll touch on all these uh, subjects going forward. So tell us about the operational modes. Um, you know, there's, I see there's peak, peak, valley, flat. Let's go over these modes and what users can expect uh, the, the device can offer them. Certainly. So in peak mode, um, the system will minimize grid consumption by prioritizing battery discharge and PV generation to handle all the loads on the, on the site, <coughs> reducing the cost during your high demand uh, uh, periods. Valley mode uses cheaper off-grid power to charge the battery again. Uh, making it available for later use. And in flat mode, um, we, we balance the energy between battery, PV and grid um, to give you, uh, yeah, just maintain steady power and give you access. Maybe it's a good idea to just explain to the, the users out there what, why is it called peak valley and flat? Why, would, would you mind telling us why it's called that? <laughs> I'm sure there's a lot of people that actually want to know. The, these sure, so, that, so that's actually based on your on your tariff structure. So, so peak is your highest charge. Um, valley is the off peak periods at night where you get substantial discounts from uh, from the energy providers and flat is your normal rate during normal business hours. 
Okay. So what is the primary uh, goal of peak mode and how does that reduce energy costs during peak periods? So peak mode's uh, primary goal is to reduce grid consumption. So uh, we do that by discharging the battery to cover all your load demands and we minimize the need to draw expensive power from the grid. Valley mode, grid power is used to charge battery. How does this approach benefit users during off-peak times? So during off-peak times, we will use the cheaper grid power to charge up the batteries, um, to prepare the batteries for peak mode, so that you can, again, discharge in your exper expensive periods and get maximum savings out of your system. Okay, and flat mode prioritizes using PV power for charging. Uh, what scenarios and environments would make flat mode um, the most effective? Sure, so flat mode is mostly your, your normal daytime um, power usage. So because most systems are oversized on PV, the excess PV can go into the battery, again, preparing the battery for your peak later in the evening. Time. Okay. Okay, so let's hop over to battery and PV management. Uh, how does Energy Track manage battery discharge and charging differently across all these modes? Sure, so in peak mode, battery discharge is prioritized to reduce your grid dependence. In valley mode, the system focuses on charging rather than discharging, so it will consume whatever power is available to it at, at a cheaper rate. And in flat mode, the battery only charges from PV, we do not charge from grid. Okay. Um, could you explain how the system prioritizes PV charging, uh, PV charging in each mode and why that matters for efficiency? So energy track prioritizes PV charging based on the energy needs and the grid cost. So in peak mode, we use PV for load first, then charges the battery if PV export is not enabled. Um, if PV export is enabled during peak times, we will export that to the grid instead of charging. Um, in valley and flat mode, PV is directed towards uh, charging the battery and um, yeah, just reducing the reliance on grid. Okay. And the PV export mode, what options are, av are available to for excess power to the grid and why might the user enable or disable? PV export. So on PV export, we we give you quite a bit of flexibility as well. So also based on your peak value and, and flat times, you will have different export options. We also have uh, export limit to um, curtail your KVA demand because um, we've seen it in quite a few ponds where we, if you're generating too much, you're actually pushing up your demand charge mm. um, instead of actually gaining savings out. Savings out. Um, so we. Yeah, we, we give quite a bit of flexibility for that um, to, to, to to get your optimum savings on, on exporting. Okay, perfect. Um, the system mentions a PV ramp rate. Can you talk about the PV ramp rate, what, the, what, the, what that does and how that in, in, enables uh, stable power output? Sure, so the PV ramp rate talks about the speed and the uh, excess PV that we allow the system to generate and the speed at which we change that. So the primary reason for, for ramp rate is to provide stability during cloudy days, especially thinking of edge of cloud effect, where you can quickly get a spike of 300-400% coming in on your PV side. So we could tell that so that you don't have these spikes on your on your supply side. Um, well, on topic still here, so I, let's talk about uh, your response time on, on your system. How, what's the frequency that you do things there? So it really depends on the hardware we use. Um, so depending on the inverters, we can respond anything between 100 milliseconds and a second. Okay, yeah, that's that's very good. Especially for curtailment and PV export control and stuff, yeah. that's very important. Yeah. Okay, so um, let's talk about the time slot configuration. Hmm. Systems al the system allows up to 10 configurable time slots. Uh, how does this work? Tell us about it. How does it operate? Sure, so the time slots is very much to allow you to be in line with uh, with ESCOM's flexible tariffs. Um, again, talking about your valley peak mm -hmm. and, uh, and flat times. So you can set up the schedule for to, to get optimum savings and align with, uh, with your service provider's uh, tariff structure. Um, we also have a functionality for seasonal and weekday versus weekend um, time slots um, because those often differ on, on the supply side as well. Absolutely. Can you give us an example of how that would be set up for like an example plant or whatever the case may be? Sure, so, so the default would be in line with ESCOM's Reflex um, times. So 
you know, you get a substantial saving from 11 o'clock at night all the way through to six o'clock the next morning. So we will use that time to charge the battery up, get the battery to 100%. When you hit that, hit that peak time in the morning, when PV is still low, but you're getting charged extra for your peak, uh, we then use the battery to offset those charges. During the day, we'll put it on flat mode, use excess PV to charge the battery up, leave the grid to, to just supply the loads when needed. Um, PV will still prioritize loads where possible. Um, and then again in the evening, so we will normally have a bit of a top up if you want to do the savings on your peak time. So we'll have a top up just, just before peak time, just to get a bit of extra power into the battery if needed. And then your peak time in the afternoon again, discharge your battery down. We pause the battery charging from uh, 10 o'clock up until 11 o'clock. And then at 11 o'clock at night, we will start again to charge up the battery. Okay, let's jump to export and generator management. Um, sure. So the, the product supports both PV and battery export capabilities. Right? Yes. Could you explain the benefits of the when, why you want to export the battery? Um, yeah, sure. So a lot of the of the utilities also prov provide quite a quite a, bit, quite a good rebate rate um, when exporting during peak power uh, times as well. So um, if you have excess battery and you do not just want to use it to reduce your own cost, you can also export that into the grid, get a higher rebate, and then start charging up again at the lower rate. Okay, perfect. When working with a generator, how does Energy Track handle PV production to keep the generator operating efficiently? Sure, so PV and battery will be used together um, in generator mode. We we have set points for your generator's minimum power that it needs to, to maintain, because um, obviously you don't want your generator to run and then I load because that's going to damage your mm -hmm. engine. Um, so we, if as soon as the as the load gets lower than the generator minimum set point, we will actually charge the battery to keep the power stable, keep it above that uh, threshold. And on the converse of that, if your load is exceeding the generator maximum set point, we will bring in PV and battery and bring it down again. Bring it down too. I think you covered the this, the next question. Then what what happens when a generator output fail falls below or certain thresholds, and how does the battery step in to maintain that balance? Yeah, so, so, we, <laughs> so we'll start charging to to keep the power on the generator. Perfect. Okay, so let's talk about input settings and system configuration. This is a big one for in the, for in the installer world. Um, how does the, the customization or input settings? How do settings like max PV export power and grid start uh, grid charge stop soc allows the users to t tailor their systems sure so these are all just settings to to optimize your your return on investment at the end of the day um, so you might want to use grid, grid to charge your battery up to a 50 percent to have a backup but you don't want to use the grid to charge your battery all the way up to 100 percent because then you're just wasting efficiencies um, the same with the pv export um, you want to to get a saving on your PV export when the municipality allows for that. But at the same time, you don't want to, to push up your demand charge. So there's always a balance between between a caveat demand and, and power consumption. Um, we are very much focused around demand charge at the moment. That I think it's a bit of a surprise cost that's that's hit a lot of the a lot of, of the work. guys lately. Yeah. Um, and the demand charge is now making up on a lot of the sites that we manage um, before we started like 50% of the, of yeah. the bill. Yeah. Um, and uh, to your point, explain the significance of minimum grid import setting and how it prevents feedback of, <laughs> of, to the grid. Sure, so, so minimum grid import is just, um, because we are a reactive system, unfortunately, just like any other hybrid um, system out there, we have to react to the power on the plot. So minimum grid import just ensures there's a, there's a small amount of grid power coming in at all times so that if your load substantially drops in a very like short time frame that we can then respond without actually exporting to the grid. What role does the discharge stop SOC play in managing battery usage and preventing over discharge? So the discharge stop SOC is for all your planned power usage. Um, so that excludes when you've got a actual power failure. So when you have a power failure that certain gets ignored. Um, but that's for your for your planned energy usage, so peak, um, peak demand, et cetera, et cetera. So, you know, to get your savings, but without putting the battery under too much strain, without cycling the battery too hard, because that 
obviously has an effect on your lifespan of the battery as well. Okay. Okay, let's go to off-grid and generator modes. Um, energy track includes off-grid mode and generator mode. Could you describe the key differences between the two? So generator mode, I think we've covered substantially just yes. now. Off-grid mode, um, the only difference between off-grid mode and on-grid mode is we are a little bit more um, on the safe side when we go into off-grid mode. So we will curtail your PV slightly, uh, slightly lower to ensure that if there's a, s a sudden drop on your load side that we're not going to spike that power into the battery causing battery overcharge and over voltages um, so we just cut down a little bit on the pv to always have like a grace period there for, for overproduction okay okay so system operation and, and let's just wrap it up how does energy track ems make automatic adjustments to ensure optimal energy use across these models so Energy Track does have a subscription service that we apply some AI to, to your data. We monitor historical data. We do forecasts for, for the next few days. We apply a weekly pattern that we then roll out and we can then optimize your um, discharge percentages, your time of use, um, all the variables that we've got control over to maximize your savings um, based on forecasts and, and historical data. If someone wants to get started with Energy Track EMS, what, what do they need to consider when configuring their systems? Who, is there help available? How do they go about this? Yeah, so the most important things to to know before you install any solar system, I guess, whether it's our EMS or not, is your usage patterns, your peak times, when is when do you need the most power? What is your demand from, from the grid? Um, and most importantly, what is your budget? So, you know, we can, we've got a support team that can definitely help with these type of systems. We've got a, um, we can assist with planning, also together with Harold, who's got a planning department. We can work quite closely with you guys. Mm. And um, yeah, we can, we can definitely assist in, in planning these systems right from the start. To from the start. So just for us here at Harold's, we've, uh, we've invested heavily now in um, upping our design capabilities and specifically for sites like this where we design things correctly from the start with the correct load profiles and logging data and making sure we're, we know everything about the site before we start. So very important uh, before you, you start your project is to know what you're actually trying to build here. 100%. So finally, uh, for the future of energy management in your view, how does energy track fit into this vision? Um, the future is all about sustainability and automation. As more companies aim to reduce their carbon footprint, Energy Track is positioned quite strongly to support the shift in uh, smart data-driven energy management solutions that optimize usage and enable participation in carbon um, markets. Perfect. From our side, um, we are, we're very excited about this product because we, are, we, we feel like that's a, a, a system that's built inside South Africa that caters uniquely for South African needs and um, we feel that you know when we, we we partner with you guys on this that you have a lot of insight into the market together with us and then with our support and our footprint we can definitely bring the best solution at the most cost-effective uh, price point into the market so here at Harold's we're very excited to start this journey with you guys and we will see how this unfolds, but I, I think we're going to solve a lot of a lot of problems that are out there in the market. Thanks, Lucas. We're just as excited to to launch this new product into the market now. Um, we've been around for for a few years, but this is really a, a leap forward for us, and we strongly believe that we can that we can assist installers in in delivering the, the best solution out there. Uh, thank you so much, Richard, for sharing your insights and visiting us today here at Harold's. Uh, we really appreciate you taking your time out of your busy schedule to come and see us. Um, thank you all for watching. Uh, if you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. If you haven't already, uh, drop a comment below for questions and for some feedback uh, that you might have for Richard and the Energy Track team. And as always, stay tuned uh, for more exciting content. Until next time, thank you very much.